I have written thousands of tests throughout my career as a software engineer, and if there is one thing I have learned, it's that mastering mocks is absolutely essential to building robust and maintainable code. But what problem do mocks actually solve, and what are mocks really all about? Let's say that we have a class called user service, and my goal is to write a unit test for this class. This class has just a single method called getUserName, where we can get the username based on the ID. This method calls getUserById method from the user repository interface, and this is the interface that we want to mock. Now let's check the user repository class. This simple method just returns with a string, but in reality, most probably there would be a database call here, and this is a problem. I mean, this can be a problem from test perspective, because we don't want to connect to the database while testing the user service. And the reason is kinda simple. When we write a unit test for a user service, we don't really care about what's going on behind the scenes with the other real implementations, as we just use an interface there. So how our test would look like? For example, we can check that user repository get user by id was called inside the method and it returned with a username. And that's the username that we returns from this method. Or in other words, the result of the get user by id method should be exactly the same what the get username method returns to it. Now I need a place where my tests will go, thus I will create a new project which will be an nunit3 test project. I will call this new project as mock.tests. For this, the first thing we need is a new class which implements the iUser repository interface. But as you can see, the interface is not reachable from the mock test project because these two projects have absolutely no clue of each other. Thus, I will add the mock project as a dependency to the mock test project. And now finally we can pass this new class to the constructor of user service class. For the sake of simplicity, the get user by id method just returns with a null now. Then I will create the user service test class and create a method called returns username from user repository. I'm creating a new user repository mock object that we pass into the user service class. Then we call the get username method and expect that based on our mock class it will return a null value because that's how our mock class works. If we run our test it will pass and it's all good except that our test is kind of shit at this point. And the reason is the following: if we remove all the logic from the get username method from the user service class that we want to test and return with a null, our test will still pass. To fix this, we need to modify our method in the mock class. We will just simply specify the output based on the input. So for example, if user id is 1, we will return with username 1. If user id is 2, we will return username 2, otherwise we return with null. We also need to adapt our unit test to add these test cases, where we define for which input what is the expected output, and we also undo the changes what we did in the user service class. Now if I run the test, it will pass. And this is one of the most important rules. Whenever I write a test, I always write multiple test cases for that, because in this case you cannot accidentally break the production class, because your test will warn you that, hey, you did a fuck up here. But let's say a few days pass and you need to adapt the user service again. The iUser repository interface has a new void method called warmup, and in the user service class this method is called before called the getUserById method. Testing this is really simple, even though it didn't have any parameter input and it doesn't return with anything. What I'm gonna do is to introduce a new property called isWarmupCalled and set this property to true whenever the method is called. Then I simply adapt my test that this is warmup code property always must be true. And here is the kicker. I barely write mocks by myself like this because it's absolutely time wasting. There is a much better way to do it with a nuget package called mock. The cool thing with this library is that I can create my own mocks without creating any additional class. Nevertheless, I can also set up the methods where I have full control what's gonna happen. For example, with the setup and returns method, I can tell for which input parameter which result should it give back. So if I put 1 as the user id here, it will return with username 1. For any other input, like 0 or 2 or whatever else, it will return with null. And just a side note here, if I would run this test now, for the second test case, where the user id is 2, and the expected value is username 2, it will fail, because we just set up the mock to handle the case when the input is 1. For this case, the username will be null now. It acts the same way how we set up our mock class back then. What I also gonna do is to align my test cases parameters with the input and the output parameters with my mocks, so I can assert that the user name that returned from the service is equal what the user repository mock returned with. But let's not forget that in our original test we also checked that the warmup method was called. With the help of mock library we can also easily do it. What we gonna do is to verify that the warmup method was called once. And that's it. This is a kinda strong test. 
though we can still do one more small improvement. Currently we have 4 test cases, but we don't really need that much because we just want to check that when the input for the getUserById method is 1, it returns with one value, and if the input is another value, it will return with another different value. In this case, if you accidentally change the production code like this, at least one of your tests will still fail. If you like the video, like, subscribe and watch the next one to become a better developer.